soon, we're going to show you how to create an Access database. But first, to learn about Access databases, let's just take a brief look at one right now. We'll use the Open Database button on the toolbar. And when we click on it, the Open Database dialog box appears. By the way, the files we use in this course are not part of your software. These are files we created. Now, our database files are in our company folder. The one we want is Demonstration Models. When we double click on it, the database window opens with the Demonstration Models database. Now, notice that more toolbar buttons are now available. The toolbar and the menus change depending on what task we're doing. We're going to point out new menus and buttons as we use them. The database window includes tabs for selecting each of the six types of objects that can be included in an access database. Tables are the first type of object. Tables are where access stores data in a database. Now, as you'll see, you can have more than one table in a database. The other five types of database objects are tools for working with data. Queries are tools used for getting information from tables. Now, queries ask questions like, which customers are COD only, or which accounts are past due. Forms are powerful tools for entering, changing, and viewing data stored in tables. Reports are for printing data in professional-looking report formats. Macros are used for automating database operations. And modules are used for complex automation, often used by developers to build professional applications. Now, we won't be covering macros and modules in this course. So a database is both a collection of related data in the tables and the tools needed to work with that data. Excuse me. Can you just fill in this line? Why, certainly. Legibly. Legibly. Picky, picky, so picky. You should see his handwriting. Thank you. Thank you. You know, nobody's perfect. Now, let me think. Where were we? Oh, oh, yeah. We were talking about data tables and the tools to work with them. And because of the relationships between tables, working with related information is both easy and it's efficient. Now, as an example, let's look at this database. One table, loaned out, lists the instruments currently out on loan. Another table, instruments, that lists all the instruments in inventory. While a third table, prospective customers, lists all the customers that have an instrument checked out. For each instrument on loan, the loaned out table contains one piece of data that identifies the instrument that's been checked out, plus another piece of data that identifies the person who borrowed it. Now, the relationships among these three tables make it so easy to find the needed information for each instrument on loan and for each customer who borrows an instrument, even though each table contains only part of the information. For example, an instrument's ID can lead us to information on that instrument's price and purchase date, while a customer ID can help us locate that person's last and first names. Working with related data stored in this way is, well, it's efficient because it reduces the amount of disk space and data entry required. So now let's open a table and take a closer look. The tables in the demonstration models database are already displayed. But the table we want is prospective customers. And we can open an object with the Open button or by double-clicking on the object name. We double-click on Prospective Customers. The table opens in Datasheet view. Now, with this view, we can see and work with the data in the table. In Datasheet view, the table resembles a spreadsheet with the information organized in rows and in columns. The rows in the table, th those are called records. Each record contains information about a particular item, such as a person or a thing. The columns, on the other hand, are called fields. And each field describes a type of data being collected for each item, such as a person's last and first name. We close the datasheet window by clicking on its close button. And we close the database the same way. Well, now you've seen what makes up a database. In the next topic, we're going to create one.